Hello team, welcome back to another reporting quickie. In this reporting quickie, we'll be looking at the methodology. So today's quickie, why you should pay more attention to the methodology. We'll also be looking at two different example feedbacks. And then finally, we'll be finishing off with some resources to aid in your methodology subsection. So, why should you pay more attention to the methodology? Well, the methodology is a rather diverse section. The type of report, as declared by the aims, will influence its look and go. So depending on what you intend to do in your report, your methodology must reflect that. The methodology, quite simply, is an ingredients list and recipe of your report, of all the things you're going to do in your report. So in a web app, vulnerability scanner comparison report, kind of compared in two scans, Burp Suite versus OWASP Zap, for example, You'd want to outline what tools you selected and why. That's very important to say why. Along with what experiments we intend to carry out and again, why. Why is very important, including what influenced their design. In a report documenting the creation of a tool, this is where you'd outline the technologies you'd be using and what intended design would be and the details of their implementation. So it's it's really just making sure that you cover your back and say why you've done stuff and what you're going to do. Here's an example of a rubric you should align your work with regardless of your report type. So this has got to do with every type of report. So as we said, we could be a software design one or it could be a comparison, kind of a scientific analysis one. They have to both align with this type of methodology. And there's only two... Um, points in here. It calls for a clear definition and sound reasoning. This means you should cover every detail necessary for the forthcoming experiments and give adequate reasoning for their selection. So that's why I was making a point of saying why this sound reasoning is, what, 50% of what you need to put in your methodology here, if there's only good to them. So here is some feedback, as because they can be quite lengthy and quite diverse. I won't show you a complete methodology and then discuss as it would be quite boring. Instead we'll focus on just a, a feedback um, and we'll make decisions about the work from there. This is a poor example of feedback um, where they're going to be going over an evaluation of an open source web app or vulnerability scanner. So think of what that would look like in your mind. They're going to be looking at different types of uh, web app vulnerability scanners so they have to see what they're going to experiment on, how they're going to determine what is the best or what is uh, the most effective, what they try to find out, is it the most, the, uh, most the greatest accuracy, or is it the most effective, or is it the one that's got the most features? That's the kind of stuff we want to look at. So, here are some comments that they've got. The methodology could be formatted better. So, there's greater granularity, meaning that it should be more detailed. This means that um, instead of just having an overview of like experiment one, um, or the experiments, they've not broke it on, like experiment one, what I'm going to do, experiment two, what I'm going to do, experiment three, this can really help if you break it down into kind of logical sections, similar to your overall report, it can help the reader when it comes to structuring it in their mind what you're going to do and when. Try and break up your work logically, and then if you need to look at the report writing quickly on structure for some resources and some kind of ideas on when you should use subsections. Next section is that the methodology actually uh, outlines each step, but it doesn't tell us what each step is. So you want to say that you're going to do experiments, and you're going to do experiment one, focusing on WordPress sites, but you're not going to do, uh, and then you've got experiment two, you're focusing on um, PHP sites or um, Django or something like that. That might sound like it's you know what you're talking about there but we we actually don't i know what you're talking about in the kind of sense that yeah you're going to try wordpress sites or you're going to try um django sites but maybe explain to the reader what this entails is there going to be multiple ones what type of version they're going to use again this is where you can start to get into why you've done this which is very important in the methodology Just because you called a step like analyze data, for example, doesn't mean we know every type of analysis undertaken. 
Steps 3 and 4 are very uh, similar. References are essential, especially in the methodology. The ultimate goal of your report is to produce a sound and reproducible piece of work. If someone, you want to strive to make sure that someone was to pick up your report, they could read it and actually reproduce it. That means that you're going to make sure you're going to have all the references to all the different types of tools that you're going to be using. And you have to make sure it's a specific version. So when you're referencing the uh, Nmap, you want to have the specific version of Windows, etc. You use and that always kind of helps the the specific version for tools is something that I, I look for quite a lot because there can be quite a big difference if you are scanning a, or doing buffer overflows on a Windows XP versus buffer overflows on Windows 10. And the fifth comment here, a methodology always benefits from a visual aid similar to introduction. Think about like a table for listing your tools rather than bullet points or a UML diagram to show the software design. Something like that will help a reader understand what's going on rather than just text. Again, it breaks it up as well. Looks better when it's structured. Overall, this example, although I said it was poor, it wouldn't achieve a good mark due to the points mentioned above. And here's a decent example. From this feedback, we can see that there's some minor errors in the formatting. Comment 1 kind of points this out. Such as that they've used a table Oh, they've used bullet points um, rather than a table for their um, for listing things. A table is always better than a lot of bullet points. A bullet points just kind of make it look like a recipe, as I was saying. Um, you want to make sure you've got a table in there. Be a bit more um, authority to it than a checklist of what to do. Um, and again, as I said, kinda, you have to have detailed subsections. And make sure you're doing it chronologically as well. Don't want to jump around everywhere. Make sure that if you've got a set method where you have to do stuff in a certain order, it's told to you in that order. The justification provided in the methodology is lacking. Remember to think critically and give detailed reasoning. The next comment provides a way in which you can do that. And then number three here, um, using references adds a lot of depth to your report. Um, has there been a previous study which has influenced your decisions? So, like, let's say there's a previous study which did a similar experiment. You can say that I'm going to copy their experiment method because it worked last time. Like, that's how you do it. But you might say, but the, it's out of date. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use their method, but I'm going to update it for this year. Kind of thing. And then the fourth comment here. Unlike previous feedback, this report makes good use of visual aids. Don't forget to some include some in yours. Overall, this example would achieve a good, close to great mark, but unfortunately there is some revision necessary. Now, here are some resources to refer to when writing your methodology. The link on the left is particularly good, and as always, I'd highly recommend having a visit on PhraseBank for the methods section. So in summary, this report in Quickie Episodes has focused on how to write a report's methodology. We've seen some common mistakes and good practices from the exemplar feedback which you can take away and learn from. And with some further reading, you can improve your methodology to secure a great mark. That's all for me, and as always, I hope you enjoy this episode, and good luck.